In this video, we'll look at developing with Stripe apps and play around with the UI extensions SDK. Picking up where we left off, let's look at the developer experience of Stripe apps and explore some of the more common components of the UI extensions SDK. If you don't already have an app running, remember to start it with the command stripe apps start and follow the prompt to run it in the Stripe dashboard. Let's navigate over to our Hello World viewport, which is in the customer detail page. And there we have our Stripe app running. Now let's start with a quick overview of the more common components by diving into the code. Every Stripe app should have a context view component at its root. You can use this component to display some information about your app, such as a title, description, and an external link to your site or docs. Let's start fresh and remove all the contents of this context view and build our own functionality. After saving this TSX file, let's switch back to the browser and we'll see the app there has updated to reflect our changes. Stripe apps has the same hot module reloading experience you'd expect from a modern front-end framework. Similarly, any errors will be displayed in both the browser and your terminal window. You might have noticed that context view comes with the props user context and environment. These contain information about the Stripe account the app is running on and details about the environment. Let's use some of context view's props to show off some of the details in these variables. We'll use the description and banner props to show the account ID and customer ID. Let's start by adding to our context view some additional props. We'll add a description. And in here, we're going to add, we'll say, the account ID. So we'll say account is equal to user context dot account dot ID. Let's save this, see what this looks like. There we go. We have our account ID is listed there. And then next, let's show a banner. So what I'm going to do is type banner equals, and this is going to be some JSX I'm going to return. I want to add a banner, which I'll add here. It's going to be the type default. I'll give it the title of customer and the description is going to be our environment dot object context dot id. I'm going to make sure in case this is null. And that is going to be the end of our banner component. Let's save, go back to our app, and here we see we have the customer ID as well. Next, let's add interaction, like some data that we want to capture. The best way to do that is with a focus view, which allows you to open a dedicated focus space that is ideal for data input. Let's add the focus view in a button that triggers the opening of that view by editing some state we literally set up with React's use state hook. So let's first create some state. We'll say const show data input set show data input equals use state, which is going to have a default or well, type of Boolean. We'll set the default to false. Next, within our context view, we want a button. We'll have it the type of primary so that it stands out a bit more. And we'll have an unpress function. Now, when we unpress, we want to say set show data input to true. And then within the button, we'll call this add item, like so. Let's save. There we have our button. Of course, when we click it, it'll change some states, but it won't be reflected in the EUI anywhere. So let's change that. Underneath our button, let's add a focus view. Now the focus view is going to have a title of data input. We need a property shown, which determines whether we want to show the focus view or not. And here we'll simply use show data input, the variable we created earlier. And finally, we did an onClose function for now. This is what will trigger when you click the X button in the top right of the, of the focus view. And here we'll just say shut show data inputs to false. Let's close our focus view and we'll leave it empty just for now. Let's save this, go back to our app, click add item, and here we have our focus view. But of course, we can't do anything with it yet because it's pretty empty. But at least we need to know that if you click the X button, it should close and you can reopen it. Now, let's populate our focus view with a text area. We'll add a label and an area label for accessibility. When you add data into the text area, we'll automatically save it a new state, new item. So let's start with creating our state. We'll 
of new item and set new item, which is going to be using the use state hook, which has type string, and will default to an empty string. Now in our focus view, let's add a text area. We'll give it the label of add new item. We'll give it an, an area label because accessibility is very important of add new item as well. Add a placeholder, enter new item, and an on change function. So the onTouch function is going to take an event. And here we're going to use our state setter we just created, which is set new item e.target.value. And then we'll self-close this text area. Let's go check it out. Let's click add item. And here we have a lovely little text area. So we can type stuff in here, which will change the state, but we have no way of actually saving it yet. So let's fix that. We'll go back to our code and within our focus view, Let's also add primary action and secondary action props to our focus view. These will control the save and cancel actions in our view. So let's start with a primary action, which is going to take some JSX. In here, we'll add a button, which will set the type to primary because we want this to draw the most attention. And we'll have an on press. In here, we want to call a function called add new item, which doesn't actually exist yet, but that's okay. We'll just step this out. And then in here, we want to say, have this button say save. Next, we want a secondary action, which is going to look very similar. We're going to have a button. This time, it'll just remain the default. We'll just have an on press prop. And in here, it's quite simply, we want to close the focus view. So we'll say set show data input to false. And this will just be a cancel button. So let's save this, go back to our code, add item. Here we have our cancel and save button nicely positioned in the bottom right hand corner with a nice color for save and a default color for cancel. So clicking cancel should just return me back to the main page. But clicking save doesn't do anything just yet because we don't have this add new item function. So let's do something about that. Let's say const add new item equals this function. So now we have this data. What should we do with it? Let's use it to build a list of items. Now let's use some new state, something called items, to be able to capture the new state, or capture the new items. So we'll say this is use state, and this is going to be type an array of strings. This will default to an empty array. In add new item, let's say set items, items.concat new item. And then let's clean up after ourselves by saying set show data input to false to close the focus view and set new item back to empty string. So now we have that data, let's do something with it. Let's add a list of items to our state. That way we can use that to populate the list component of list items. Going here underneath our focus view, let's add a list. We'll give it an aria label prop, which will say is list of data. And inside list, let's map over our items. And I think we'll need the index as well. And we'll return a list item component. Inside this list item, we'll give it a title. Will this be the item itself? And we'll give it a key, which we'll use the index. And we'll close off this component. Let's save that back to our, to our app. Let's say let's add an item. We'll say new item one. Click Save. There we have that. Now let's try another one just for sure to make sure it works. New item two. Click Save. Now we have our second item. And there we have it, a super simple app that takes some data and renders it in a list. So that was a quick intro to some of the more common components included in the UI extensions SDK. You can learn more about the components highlighted here and the many other components in the Stripe app docs. Thanks for watching.